Okay, y'all, I told you I was going to be mowing and I was going to be praying and talking to God. And this is what happens when you do that. Mowed, not mowed. Mower, sitting there parked because this is what we do. All right, what we do is we stop when God starts. Ooh, I think my chair about collapsed. Uh, when God starts talking. Um, like I said, I was going to talk to God, do some things there. Um, <clears throat> while I'm mowing. Um, and just seek him for answers, which way to go, what to do. So this is the I'm mowing look. And um, you, you don't have to be impressed. And it'll be okay. And you don't have to slam me either. And it'll be okay. But as I'm doing it, um, he says, you know, I'm just, I'm thinking about how this is all starting to click. God's shown me a vision and um, part of it, if you've seen my Nineveh video on here, you'll know I fought it. I fought it. Um, there were so many reasons and I got so discouraged by so many things and um, and ultimately, I just didn't want, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. But I'm actually to the point now that I am actually getting super excited about it. And I don't think it can come quick enough. What a turnaround. But see, I serve a God of turnarounds. So whatever you've got going on in your life, whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, whatever he has shown you, just know he is a God of turnarounds. Um, and the scripture that came to me was Proverbs 13, 15. Let me read that to you, which says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressors is hard. See, when he shows us things, we can do it or we can not do it. Yes, we have free will. But all of our choices and all of our decisions have consequences, no matter what. And this book that I read to you out of, this, this Bible, this Holy Word of God, um, it's a guidebook of what to do to protect us. It's a book of love letters. It's a book of instruction. And um, so is His words. So is the visions. So are the... The, the dreams that he gives you. These things are for our benefit to help us and to help others. So we can discount them if we want and just half do it. We can not do it. We can run away. But let me tell you something. If God has, if God has shown you something or told you something and you don't do it, there's also a scripture that says, well, you know, if he's told you to do it, it's good. It's for a purpose. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin even that covers this but it's also disobedience and if you don't obey if you're in disobedience that's sin the way of the transgressor is hard you're transgress transgressing against God if you don't do it if you don't do it you don't believe him um, that he's God he knows what's best for you he knows you better than you um, he says you know that he's got this plan you know, plans to prosper you and plans for a future and not to harm you. Um, he covers all this in his word. Um, so I, I want to read this to you also in Romans 4. I've lost every page I had out here. The wind's blowing. Um, in Romans 4, 20 through 21, it says this about Abraham. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. So, we've got to be in that place. Now, Sarah laughed. Some of us laugh when God says set up. Some of us go the other way out of fear, and some of us will blatantly say, I'm not doing that. Um, and some of us struggle to believe that God can do that, or that we can do what God wants us to do. But he doesn't show us things that he won't help us with. Okay. Um, I mentioned my Nineveh video. I was just in a place of, and even last week, week before, I was in a place of, 
I'm not going to lie, unbelief, because I was like, because I've staggered. I've staggered at the promise of God. I'm not good um, as Abraham. I've staggered a bit. I've, I've been afraid. I've been, I just, I didn't want to commit to that because I like change. I like, but what it could open up is so much travel when I'm not busy there. I mean, this could be the ticket to everything I've been wanting to do and have no means to do. God is literally opening my eyes to all these things he's wanting to do through this and the ways he can do it and how it will just be simple. I mean, like I'm thinking it's going to take a miracle, God, and it is. But he makes those things simple. Oh, he makes a way where there's absolutely seems to be no way. In our eyes, there's no way. There's no way. Just for me to want to, he's already worked a miracle. But just to, just to kind of prove that. Um, now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Am Amittai, saying, and this is the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 1. God said, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. And cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Um, that's not the specific vision that God gave me. And y'all will learn so much more about it because I'm fixing to get it kicked off soon. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Um, so you'll be with me through that journey. I'll show you the progress as we go. I'm sure there will be ups, there will be downs, but it'll be great. And it's going to be a wonderful learning experience. And it's going to turn into something amazing. Amazing. But Jonah, verse 3, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down to it. It will go to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He ran away from God. He ran away from what God wanted to do. And it cost him. He paid the price. It cost him. I want you to realize that. Um... And then we say, oh, well, this is coming against me. This is coming against me. This is coming against me. I'm just, it's so, no, God is shutting doors. And, um, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. We think all these things are the enemy coming against us and we just can't function in this and that. And the way of the transgressor is hard. You're walking in disobedience. It's going to be hard. You don't have the grace and favor of God. Um, you probably got his mercy because he'll go out and get that one sheep when it runs away from the other 99 because he loves it dearly. But you're not going to have the favor when you're walking in disobedience. Not like you would have. And the way of the transgressor is hard. You're transgressing against God. Um, so that makes it perfectly clear. What I want to say to you is this. Um, he still had mercy when he got thrown overboard. Uh, that was back in the day where they were like, oh, something's up. They knew everything was spiritual. They knew that it was either good or it was evil, and there was evil among them. Jonah was in disobedience, going the wrong way, and it and he they tossed him off the ship, and it saved everybody else. When the seaweed was going around his neck, and he got cast out into the sea, God still sent help. He still went to get him, still sent a big fish, brought him up, and vomited him out. He wasn't the prime example of how to go ahead and do it correctly, but he did do it. He was still a little begrudgingly, still a little angry, but he knew better than to go against God completely. Let's not go against God, but let's instead be a cheerful, obedient servant. Because God will take care of you if you are obedient to what he wants you to do. Um, and he wants to bless others through you. And he wants to bless you like crazy. So, what are you running from? And then dig a little deeper. Why? Why does it scare you so much? Why does it anger you so much? Why do you want to go to the other way? Why do you not want to do what God has clearly said to do? Don't you think he can work all those details out? And then you all of a sudden be excited. And then, once you step into it, more thankful to have it, to have experienced it, to be in the middle of it, than you ever thought possible. That's how God 